so now we will discuss the cholinergic drugs that is the drugs which are acting on cholinergic nervous system or parasympathetic nervous system the cholinergic drugs the term is usually mentioned for cholinomimetics that means those drugs which can mimic or imitate the actions of acetylcholine so acetylcholine is an endogenous signal molecule which can bind to the cholinergic receptors and produce cholinergic actions or parasympathetic stimulation and the drugs that is cholinomimetic drugs <coughs> they are structurally similar to acetylcholine and they can also bind to the cholinergic receptors and can mimic or produce the action similar to that of acetylcholine when they are administered exogenously so these are the drugs what we give exogenously which can mimic or imitate the action of acetylcholine by stimulating the receptors for acetylcholine that is cholinergic receptors since they mimic the parasympathetic action they are also known as parasympathomimetic so coming to the classification of drugs so there will be a particular order of learning pharmacology of a drug that it starts with the definition like i just now i mentioned cholinomimetic what it is followed by the classification that means the drugs which are coming under that particular class or those drugs which are doing that particular action followed by their pharmacological actions their pharmacokinetic importance adverse effects and the uses and any other relevant information related to that drug so that and the thing completes the pharmacology of a particular class of drugs so starting with the classification two classification that is choline esters and cholinomimetic alkaloids cholinomimetic alkaloids they are obtained from the plant sources the choline esters acetylcholine as such we can use as a drug but synthetic drugs are there like methacholine carbocol and bethanicol try to learn it together acetylcholine methacholine carbocol and bethanicol cholinomimetic alkaloids muscarine already i mentioned in the previous class this attracts muscarine it can stimulate the muscarinic receptors that's why the receptor is known as muscarinic receptors other drugs pilocarpine this is most important and alkali which is obtained from the arcanet coming to the pharmacological actions of cholinomimetic drugs we are taking acetylcholine as a prototype because acetylcholine can stimulate all the cholinergic receptors so we are considering acetylcholine as a drug and we are what happened when it is administered exogenously it's not the actions of acetylcholine happening within the normal physiology but we are discussing the pharmacological actions of acetylcholine as a drug when it is administered exogenously so starting with the muscarinic action that means what is happening with the drug when it is bind to the muscarinic receptors so kindly refer back the flow chart the table which i had given before where the receptors are there location is there what action if the receptor is activated so same thing we are mentioning here in terms of sentences so on cardiovascular system that is heart and blood vessels what are the actions acetylcholine if it is administered exogenously what all actions will be produced on heart acetylcholine it causes hyperpolarization that is a inhibitory postsynaptic potential on esenoral cells and decreases the heart rate i hope you remember negative chronotropic effect and it can also reduce the conduction velocity across the av node and also in purkin fibers a negative thermotropic effect and it mainly decreases the force of contraction of atria but that can also affect the contraction of ventricle to some extent and all together a negative inotropic effect so all together the acetylcholine if it is administered exogenously the effect on heart will be decrease in heart rate decrease in the conduction velocity of the impulses across the av node and decrease force of contraction of atria mainly and also 
to some extent in the ventricle. So overall what we get clinically is bradycardia. Effect on blood vessels. As such, acetylcholine and normal physiology do not have much effect on blood vessels. But when you administer it exogenously, it can induce the release of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells by stimulating the M3 receptor in the endothelial cells. And the released nitric oxide can diffuse into the vascular smooth muscles and can produce vasodilatation by stimulating CGMB or English expression of CGMB. So it produces CGMB mediated vasodilatation. It's an indirect action. <coughs> Effect on smooth muscles. As the chart, uh, in the chart itself it is given, it's contraction. So the important smooth muscle affected GID. Already it is there in the chart. It increases the tone and peristalsis. Increase in GI motility leading to diarrhea. Urinary system again increase tone and peristalsis in the ureter as well as in the urinary bladder. And smooth muscle contraction of the trigon leading to urination or increased frequency of urination. And bronchial smooth muscles. Again it's important. It causes bronchospasm. And it is not prominent in normal individuals, but it may be dangerous in patients with a history of asthma or other respiratory distress. Coming to the eye, it was taken in detail with animation. Uh, can kindly refer back that one also. So first one is contraction of circular muscles of iris, which leads to meiosis. So the pupil size will reduce, and it will contract the ciliary muscles resulting in spasm of accommodation or difficulty in accommodating the far vision but near vision will be clear but far vision will be blurred so all together the effect will be blurring of vision the vision will not be clear if acetylcholine is administered the action on eye will result in blurring of vision the vision will not be clear because of meiosis and spasm of accommodation and it can increase the outflow accusum from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber already explained that and decreases intraocular tension especially in patients with glaucoma and because of that it can be used for treating glaucoma exocrine glands already mentioned it increases all secretion except milk and bile and the main increases are increase in salivation lacrimation will increase sweating will increase bronchial secretions and also gastric acid secretion will increase we have seen like arcanate, arca, arcanate, arcanate if it is taken sometimes it can release large amount of arcoline leading to all these uh, symptoms in the patient intoxicated with the arcanate. Nicotinic actions usually in the autonomic ganglia if the acetylcholine which is administered exogenously if it is large amount it is in the large amount it can act on autonomic ganglion both sympathetic and parasympathetic because acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter in both sympathetic and parasympathetic in the autonomic ganglion which can lead to tachycardia and rise in blood pressure in skeletal muscles there is no permanent effect when it is administered even by intravenous root acetylcholine but because it is rapidly metabolized but if it is directly administered in the muscle with the help of a procedure known as antiphotic administration, you can see the figure. It is with the help of electrodes. Directly administered in the muscle, it can cause twitching and fasciculation followed by paralysis. Twitching and fasciculation is a disorganized skeletal muscle contraction. So the continuous contraction of muscles finally lead to the fatigue and paralysis of the muscle. CNS effects, as I mentioned, it's undefined. We cannot explain very specifically what is the effect on CNS. Therapeutic uses. What is the use of cholinomimetics? You see, Gitanicol is one drug which is clinically used. It is used for post-operative urinary retention. Why? Because it increases the tone and peristalsis of ureter and urinary bladder and increases the urination. So that will help in post-operative urinary retention that is after the operation if there is a urinary retention with a nickel can be administered so that the urine outflow will be made normal paralytic ileus kindly note down you have to write post-operative paralytic ileus it is not there in the slide 
post operative paralytic ileus that is after an open abdominal surgery after the completion of surgery the ileum may not regain the normal tone so in such cases bitternicol can be administered so that the tone of the ileum or the small intestine can be regained so that the motility in the git can be again become normal neurogenic bladder atony is atony means there is no tone in the bladder it's a neurogenic defect in the neurons in such cases we can improve the tone of the bladder and congenital macacoma it's there given in the figure you can see that it's a congenital by birth macacoma uh, because of lack of tone in the colon methacholine it is used for paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia paroxysmal means it's a sudden onset supraventricular tachycardia tachycardia increases in the heart rate and supraventricular means it arises due to some defect in the impulse condition the atria that is above the ventricle so in such cases acetylcholine or methacholine can be given to reduce the heart rate because it reduces the automaticity of sa not it reduces the conduction velocity from the atria to ventricle that is more important because of the reduction of impulse conduction or there is a delay of impulse conduction from the atria to ventricle the methacholine can prevent the risk of ventricular arrhythmia which can arise due to supraventricular tachycardia because always ventricular arrhythmia is more fatal let's take pilocarpine it's a very commonly used drug it is used in open angle and acute congestive glaucoma i hope you know what is glaucoma it is due to the uh, decreased movement of aqueous humor or decreased uh, removal of aqueous humor from the aqueous chamber which will build a pressure in the eye which will pull the lens and uh, Uh, the definitely the vitreous humor and can cause damage to the optic nerve leading to permanent blindness there are different uh, preparations are available of pilocarpine which can be used for glaucoma like even a soft contact lens or ocular you can see here or uh, uh, pilocarpine gel and so many preparations are available for that the figure of glaucoma you can see that uh, what is actually what happens with glaucoma you can see the pressure develops and it pulls back and causes damage to the optic nerve and it can be given alternately with mitriatics mitriatics the drugs which increases the people's size uh, easy way to remember you can see that the d in the mitriatic it produces dilatation myosis there is no d that means it produces contraction of the people so if you alter it once one mitriatic is given followed by a myotic it will help to break the adhesion uh, attachment of the iris and lens like some rare case of disease and it can be also used to, to reverse the mitriasis after refraction testing or ophthalmo ophthalmoscopy so mitriatics are usually given in a clinic uh, in order to perform ophthalmoscopy so after the procedure the patient will be feeling uh, difficulty in moving out into a bright light so the pupil size should be brought back to the normal size so that the patient can go home on himself but there will not be any difficulty in facing the bright light so after the procedure if the patient still is on mitriasis you can give pilocarpine so that the pupil size can be brought back to the normal size by meiosis produced by the pilocarpine in xerostomia it's a dryness of mouth definitely the uh, colonomimetic the increase of salivation so we can give pilocarpine 5 mg tablets is available can be given to increase salivation especially after head or neck radiation treatment you can see the dryness the tongue is very dry fishes are there in such cases pilocarpine can be given as a tablet 5 mg tablet is available three times a day which will improve the salivation thank you